Welcome to Pristine's recording on PRM3 topic stress testing. So these are the different learning objectives that we are going to learn, uh, we are going to discuss in this recording. We are going to discuss stress testing in this recording. So what is stress testing? Stress testing involves performing simulations or creating scenarios to see how a portfolio would perform under stress events. And these stress events have very less chance of happening but uh, not entirely impossible. So in other words, we subject the portfolio of the financial institution to extreme stress movements and see how it copes with the stress. And um, if a portfolio performs well under stress, uh, surely it is geared up to perform well under normal times. So why do we want to go for stress testing? The reason is that we estimate the risk of the portfolio using value at risk. Uh, and as we have seen earlier, the value at risk has its own disadvantages. And the most important disadvantage of uh, value at risk is that it does not give the estimate of maximum possible loss. So even if you know the value at risk, the num the, that number will not tell you anything about the possible loss on the portfolio when the VAR is exceeded. So in a nutshell, stress testing aims to identify the potential extreme adverse outcomes and their severity impact on uh, the portfolio. Now, what do we mean by stress scenarios? These might include the events that have taken place in the past that uh, value at risk models uh, have failed to capture. Uh, for example, VAR models uh, based on normal distribution assume that the possibility of movements by more than six times standard deviation is very, very low. Uh, it is almost close to zero. However, in 1987, the S&P index crashed by several more standard deviations. Or say, if something like uh, the situation that led to downfall of LTCM happens again. So how will my portfolio respond to that? That is a question we want to answer. And sometimes stress uh, tests may also include uh, negligible market activity uh, and that would uh, create problems in terms of liquidity, etc. So in general, uh, value at risk models should be accompanied by stress testing in order to get the overall picture of uh, risk faced by the portfolio. The Basel Committee asked the banks to uh, provide stress testing information on uh, three areas. Now, firstly, there are some scenarios that require no simulation to be performed by the bank. Uh, for instance, the largest losses actually recorded by a bank during a particular period. So uh, for that case, uh, no simulation as such is uh, required to be performed. And then secondly, there are scenarios that require simulation to be performed by the bank and uh, these scenarios could include the impact of uh, portfolio of uh, stress scenarios experienced by the market in the past. Uh, for instance, as we have discussed earlier, uh, suppose our portfolio is subjected to extreme market movements uh, such as those experienced in 1987 or 2000, 2001 or 2008. So how would our portfolio respond to these events? Also a very important point is that stress test should also include implication of uh, breakdown of correlation and volatility assumptions. Now it is uh, generally observed that during stress times uh, there is increase in default correlation. So you know, original models could assume a low level of uh, default correlation but uh, the as the things really start going bad the default correlation starts increasing because ultimately it is the same economy-wide factor that uh, affects the performance of all the industries and all the companies and etc and etc and uh, that was observed in 2008 so if uh, such increase uh, in the default correlation were to take place uh, then how would the portfolio respond to that and thirdly uh, there are some scenarios that are developed by the bank to capture the specific characteristics uh, of its uh, portfolio. Uh, for instance, uh, what would be the impact of uh, very high defaults in a particular portfolio in a specific geography? So in a nutshell, uh, stress tests may therefore include historical scenarios uh, or secondly hypothetical scenarios and thirdly algorithmic or the scenarios developed by the bank to capture specific characteristics of its uh, portfolio. As we have seen earlier, uh, our stress tests might include either historical scenarios or hypothetical scenarios. Uh, now what historical scenarios uh, that we need to consider? Now say a uh, US stock market crash in 1987-88 or say US bond market sell off in 1994 um, 
और से मेक्सिकन पेसो क्राइसिस इन नाइनटीन नाइन्टी फोर रशियन डिफॉल्ट ऑफ नाइनटीन नाइन्टी एट एंड से एल टी सी एम एंड लिक्विडिटी क्राइसिस ऑफ नाइनटीन नाइन्टी एट एंड प्रॉबेबली नाइन इलेवन अटैक्स और से द क्रेडिट क्राइसिस ऑफ टू थाउजेंड एंड देर इज अनदर फैक्टर दैट यू नीड टू डिसाइड नाउ मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंटली वी नीड टू स्पेसिफाई द शॉक्स दैट मीन्स शुड द हिस्टोरिकल शॉक्स बी टेकन विद दर एब्सोल्यूट इंटेंसिटी और विद रिलेटिव इंटेंसिटी ना वट आई मीन बाय एब्सोल्यूट इंटेंसिटी इज दैट से इंडियन रुपी गेटिंग डेप्रिशिएटेड बाय टेन रुपीज विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू यू एस डॉलर इन से नेक्स्ट सिक्स मंथ्स सो दिस इज एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ एब्सोल्यूट इंटेंसिटी एंड से इंडियन रुपी गेटिंग डेप्रिशिएटेड बाय से ट्वेंटी परसेंट ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू यू एस डॉलर इन नेक्स्ट सिक्स मंथ्स सो दिस इज एग्जाम्पल ऑफ रिलेटिव इंटेंसिटी ना इफ यू डोंट हैव एनी डेटा फॉर सर्टन शॉक फैक्टर्स and this may happen in the case of new instruments so if that be the case uh, then you can take uh, different proxies the second set of stress scenarios could be hypothetical scenarios uh, the breakdown of correlation may be taken as a hypothetical scenario and in this scenario same value at risk model may be used with uh, modified correlation matrix or uh, we may want to simulate the impact of uh, liquidity in the system drying up now moving to algorithmic approach uh, in the case of algorithmic approach there are three types of uh, approaches as you can see here firstly it is push factor approach secondly it is maximum loss approach and thirdly it is uh, extreme value theory approach now firstly in the case of push factor approach um, in this case uh, the stress factors are pushed in a direction that uh, leads to loss Uh, for example if we have a long position in one stock and uh, say short position in other another stock in that case the price of uh, first stock is pushed in the negative direction and uh, the price of the second stock is uh, pushed uh, in the upward direction and the magnitude of the push is typically expressed uh, in terms of standard deviation so uh, the price of the stock in which we have a long position where to decline by say certain x standard deviations or uh, say price of the stock in which we have a short position where to increase by uh, certain x uh, standard deviation uh, then uh, how would our portfolio uh would respond to that and a whole portfolio is simulated by pushing the factors in such a way as to cause loss to the portfolio and therefore uh, uh, this approach is called uh, push factor approach and secondly we have uh, maximum loss approach so in the case of maximum loss approach the movement of risk factors in uh, is done in such a way as to lead the portfolio to maximum loss um and of course subject to certain feasibility uh, constraints and uh, these feasibility constraints are uh, required to ensure the plausibility of uh, stress test and thirdly we have uh, extreme value theory uh, the extreme value theory focuses only on tail events uh, and not on the shape of the distribution as such as you have seen in the case of uh, normal distribution we have a bell shaped curve like this Uh, of course is a symmetric and as we go uh, in the extreme directions in the tail region right here uh, the probability of observing those events is uh, very very small the extreme value theory focuses on these tail events and it doesn't focus uh, on the shape of the distribution as such and again under extreme value theory there are uh, two uh, different approach uh, approaches and first is uh, block maxima approach and under this approach uh, some block value is taken as uh, maximum negative movement in a particular stock uh, over last one year and uh, secondly it is the peak over threshold uh, uh, peak over threshold approach uh, this approach uh, takes into account only the losses that exceed some particular uh, threshold uh, the extreme value theory is uh, mathematically very complex and it's a little bit more involved than the syllabus of uh, prm3 demands so this table uh, kind of sums up what uh, we have discussed so far uh, 
we have different approaches for stress testing that is historical scenarios hypothetical scenarios and algorithmic scenarios and the description of uh, the individual approaches uh, that is in the case of historical scenarios you replay the crisis event uh, that has already happened in the past in the case of hypothetical scenarios you create hypothetical scenarios uh, and uh, you subject your portfolio to these hypothetical scenarios and uh, you have algorithmic approach in which uh, you have either factor push model or maximum loss uh, model and the uh, there are of course uh, pros and cons associated with uh, each and every method now firstly in the case of uh, historical scenarios uh, method uh, the biggest advantage is that the data is already available so collection of data is uh, not an issue at all and uh, the con could be the proxy shocks may be numerous uh, because if uh, your portfolio consists of uh, say new instruments for which uh, you don't really have uh, uh, historical data uh, in that case uh, that could be a little bit problematic thing because you'll have to go for proxies and uh, coming to hypothetical scenarios method uh, the pros are it is relatively easy it is flexible it can be detailed uh, however when it comes to cons uh, the most important point you have got to remember is that these scenarios uh, as the name suggests are uh, purely hypothetical in nature so uh, there is no guarantee that whatever scenario that you generate could actually be the representative of the worst case scenario uh, and uh, moreover there can be limited risk information uh, in that case and then when uh, comes to third method that is the algorithmic uh, approach uh, you require minimal uh, quantitative elements uh, because you push uh, the uh, uh, you push all the variables in such a way as to uh, bring loss to the portfolio and when it comes to con uh, again uh, there is no guarantee of uh, worst case uh, scenario getting represented and uh, it may ignore the correlations part because ultimately it will only deal with the uh, uh, the prices of uh, different financial instruments but may not necessarily involve the correlations and uh, uh, it assumes that data from normal period is irrelevant uh, and sometimes it can be uh, computationally intensive now when it comes to historical scenarios uh, what historical scenario should you consider the most important thing is to remember uh, is that event interval should be chosen such that interval selected uh, composes of the all the significant moves uh, in the individual market rates and uh, moreover capturing the greatest moves uh, in the uh, factors of most interest uh, now for example your uh, portfolio consists of uh, say fixed income instruments and as you already studied in prm1 uh, for the case of fixed income instruments the interest rates in the economy uh, are a very critical factor because the movements in the interest rate would uh, have an impact on the value of your fixed income portfolio so when it comes to historical scenarios uh, you should capture the historical data that has already happened in the past uh, that should include all the significant moves in the uh, in the individual market rates now in the in this case it, it is individual interest rates uh, uh, now just to give you an example uh, sometime during say 1979 80 uh, there was a crisis between uh, us and iran and as a result of that the prices of uh, crude oil and petroleum products uh, increased uh, significantly and as a result there was great inflation and because of that the interest rates went up so if you think that this is what uh, the, this variable is uh, going to affect the uh, price of my portfolio then definitely the, the data from that period should be included and secondly you should specify the shock factors uh, that is a magnitude either the magnitude or the relative uh, intensity of the individual shock factors and uh, you should also be mindful of the fact that there could be uh, some shock factors that are completely missing for example uh, if you are playing with uh, 
some instrument or rather if your portfolio consists of a new instrument uh, that has no historical data uh, so as to speak for uh, in that case uh, if you go on for historical scenarios method uh, then probably certain shock factors could uh, completely missed out so my point is that uh, when it comes to historical scenarios uh, then these are some of the kind of limitations of that method uh, that you should be mindful of then uh, when it comes to hypothetical scenarios uh, method as we have already discussed uh, that method involves uh, create uh, creation of hypothetical scenarios um, that might have an impact on our portfolio's uh, value and uh, the hypothetical scenarios that you might want to generate could be modifying the covariance matrix or uh, some specification of uh, some factor shocks uh, again that could be in terms of uh, relative prior, uh, relative value or absolute value and then uh, you might want to uh, subject your portfolio to some systemic events that is the system wide uh, slowdown or say the drying up of liquidity and things like that and uh, uh, again uh, you might want to go for sensitivity analysis uh, for example uh, say your portfolio consists of a number of financial instruments and uh, a number of different market variables such as uh, interest rates then uh, stock index price and foreign exchange rates commodity price and say oil price uh, etc and etc affect the uh, uh, value of your portfolio uh, if that be the case uh, then you might want to go for sensitivity analysis to determine uh, which variable has maximum impact on uh, your uh, portfolio and uh, uh, last thing is hybrid method so if you find that either historical or hypothetical scenarios alone are uh, kind of inadequate to capture the all the risks that could possibly come to your portfolio then you might want to go for a hybrid method in the sense of some kind of combination of uh, historical scenarios or hypothetical scenarios or algorithmic approach